Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how we can scrape data from a website using a Power Automate Cloud Flow. So in today's example I'm actually going to look at a table of exchange rate data. I'll then pull that from the website into a JSON array which I'm then in my scenario going to pass to a Power App and display in a gallery. Now, of course, because the data is in an array, you could use it to add data to a table in Excel, or maybe add some items into a list, or indeed save as records to Dataverse. Plenty of options with the data once it's converted to an array. If that's something that interests you, please make sure you watch on. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So here you can see the table in question. On our, on our website here, we've got three columns of data with the currency and then two different values. And I'm gonna pull this across into a flow which I'm gonna build from scratch today. Now, if I start with my flow, you can see that I have the manual trigger and I will eventually convert that into the Power Apps trigger. But for now, for testing, I'm gonna kick things off with a premium connection. So we do need to use the HTTP action and that will allow us to access that website via the get and then I can paste the URL that I was keen to get out there into this parameter here. Now if I go ahead and save this and test it we'll be able to see that uh, just from this quick action that we've added we're able to get all of that HTML back into our flow. So if I open that up, we can have a look at the body here, and here we have all the HTML. So if I jump back onto that website and was to right click and go to view page source, I can then do a search for the table tag, which is what I'm going to be doing today in Power Automate. So you can see that I have three potential opening table tags there. If I jump down onto the second one and maybe start scrolling across a bit, Hopefully we'll start seeing some data that's uh, recognizable. So I see at least one of the columns there. We've got Monet and we've also got Achat. Um, my French is not great, so I apologize. But definitely we're pulling through some of those values. We've got the currency for euros. And this is the, the string of data that we're gonna look for in our flow. So how do we get that? Well, we're gonna have to use Compose several times throughout this solution and I'm going to use index of, and of course that is going to allow me to return the position of a string. So I'm going to look at that body and I want to return that opening tag of table, but I just did a search there on the page source and it wasn't the first table, it was actually the second table. So I'm going to use the expression nth index of, which will allow me to find the nth occurrence. And in this case, if I put in a comma, I want to find the second occurrence of that tag. Now, I've highlighted that expression. I'm going to copy it and say OK. We'll rename this action to the opening tag. And then I'm going to create another compose to find the closing tag. And that's why I've copied that expression. So closing tag, if I jump into the expression builder here and paste that in, Rather than this opening tag, I now want to find the closing tag, which has got the forward slash in front of it there. And if I hit OK, we now have the position of the second occurrence of the opening tag and the second occurrence of the closing tag. With the next compose, we can go and get that substring. And we're going to use the expression substring to do that. So in terms of dynamic values, we want to check that body for this particular substring. And the substring expression looks for a starting index, which is our opening tag. So we can pick there the opening tag. And then we're looking for a length. Now, if the closing tag is at position 500 and the opening tag is at position 400, then the length is gonna be the closing tag minus the opening tag. So we can use sub, open close brackets, and we're going to insert the closing tag, a comma, and then the opening tag, and all being well, if I hit OK, that should update and save. So that will get us our table string. I'll call that table. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save and test, and there's one thing to note at this point, the closing tag is the position of the beginning of the string, so the beginning of that closing tag. 
but I do need to have everything up into the end of that closing tag. And if I expand this compose action here, we can see that whilst I've got the opening tag, if I go all the way to the end, I'm missing the closing tag. So simple, simple step. All I need to do is just type in that closing tag and that completes off our table or our HTML table. Next step is all about converting it into XML because if we convert it into XML, I can convert it um, a lot easier into JSON. So another compose, I'm going to rename that as XML and it's quite simple. I type in the expression XML, open close brackets and select the output from that compose table and say OK. Now that it's an XML, I can easily convert it into JSON. And I can do that using the JSON expression. So I'll type in JSON, opening and close brackets. And if I insert that compose XML and hit OK, I'm just going to rename this as well so that I know that this is my, my JSON array. If I go ahead and save and test that, we can have a look at the output of both the XML and the JSON array action. Now I've got a video on uh, doing this in more detail, more complex situations, but this is a relatively straightforward situation for converting it into XML and then into JSON. So we can see now we have our JSON array, and if I was to expand this, you can see that the table tag is now a key for one of the objects. And we've got a table header uh, array here with the column names. And then the important bit is this table row array because you can see now that we have these repeating objects that have the currency and then these two values that we're looking to select. And so for sending this back to Power Apps or doing anything with it, to be honest, if I'm wanting to create a new list item, I want to simplify this data quite significantly, to be honest. So I'm going to copy this object and I'll open it up in uh, Notepad Plus shortly to have a look at it. But the first thing I want to do is to get access to this table row object so I can get access to this full array. And if I look at the path, I can see that the path will be table and then follow this line down is TR. So I'll go back into edit and I'm going to go into compose and then I want to create a new expression and a little tip here. I want to get the expression for this action here. I'm going to go to, into the expression tab, type in the number one, pick that compose JSON array and then just get rid of that one. And then because we looked at that array a minute ago, I want to get the table and then the TR object. And hopefully if I say okay to that and hit test, it should return to me all those objects with the row data. So we'll test that and have a look. And we can see that we now have, if I expand that, all of the individual objects containing each of those rows. So this is where we can use a select. And the select will allow us to then pick out the header we've got here for the currency and then those two values. And so a select will let us loop through each of these objects individually and grab those values. So if I go back into edit and I'm going to use my select action. And if we insert that compose as the input, we then need to define our map. So we need those three column headers. So I'm going to jump back onto the website and just grab these column headers. Of course, I could call them anything that I want, to be honest, but I'll just go with the values that are on the website for now. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it because I cannot speak a word of French. We'll grab that last one there and chuck that one in and just tidy this up because a few extra return lines. And if I bring across Notepad Plus and have a look at one of these objects here, you can see that first of all, we need to get into this TD key and then we need to get into this P key in order to get the Euro string, but it is actually different for the other two objects beneath. So if you know how to access objects within an array, they're called by integer indexes. So this is integer index zero, this is one, this is two. 
and we want to loop through all of these in our select. So what we do here in the expression tab is to type in item, question mark, and then we need to think about what we want to retrieve from this object. So item is going to return everything. We need to get into this TD key. So if I type in now in single quotes, uh, TD, and then we want to get into the first object in the next array. So thinking about inter integer indexes, that will be zero. So I can put in question mark and then in brackets zero. And then after that, if I put another question mark and jump back onto this notepad plus, I want to get into the value P for this particular one here. So all I need to do is square brackets, single quotes, and the letter P. So I'm gonna copy that and think about the next one. So the next one, if I paste that in and bring up the notepad, if I was to return P, I would get everything in this object. Um, but I want to get the text. So I can copy that key name, and I've got to remember also that we've got several objects, so I'm no longer in object zero, I'm in an object one. So if I go back here, I need to change this to object one, and rather than it just being P, it needs to be P text. So I can use a forward slash text. The other option would be to put another question mark and put the text value in square brackets. So if I copy that, say okay, we'll go into this one here, I can paste that in. All I need to change here is the value one to value two, because we're now into the last object here, zero, one, two. And just to, just to demonstrate, if I was to remove this text here, I could put in the question mark and the hash text. So this would be the alternative in single quotes if you're not familiar with using the forward slashes. So if I say okay and save that and test that, that should hopefully get us a nicely repurposed array of data based on those three columns. So it's run okay. If I go to the select, here we go. We can see we've got the euros, sterlings, dollars, uh, etc. So all those values have been nicely pulled through. And based on your requirement, you can either now save that to Excel, into a list, Dataverse, etc. But for today, I'm going to pass this back to my Power App. So for the Power App, the first thing I need to do is I need to update the trigger. So if I delete that trigger, I can then go and select the Power Apps triggers, and there's one and two. We're going to go with version two, even though it doesn't really matter. Version two has the improvements for the input parameters. We don't need that today, but I prefer the version two. And then in terms of response, whilst there is a respond to um, power apps or flow that you see here, it will only currently allow you to return a string. There is a new feature that has come out this week, it's not yet reached my tenant sadly, that does allow you to parse strings in power apps to create an array. When that comes out, I'll maybe do a, a quick video. For today's video, because we're already in the premium actions, I'm going to use the HTTP response, which is here, it's a premium action. And this allows me to respond back to the Power App with the data from the select. So the data is, like I mentioned, from the select. We do need to, however, create this JSON schema. And the way we do that is from running the flow. So I go ahead and test that again. And this should run the flow. And then we can jump into the select action and copy the output to create our schema. So highlighting all of this, we could do a Control A and Control C back into edit. I can then go into generate from sample and insert my payload and say done. And you'll see that I have a nicely created schema here that now will allow this action to return the data back to Power Apps. So I'll go ahead and give that a save. I also better give it a more meaningful name or I'll never find it um, to scrape data from web hit the save button, I'll jump onto my Power App. So with the Power App, I'm just gonna use a button today to run the flow. You could do it via the on visible property of your screen. And I'm going to populate a gallery. So if I go and insert my vertical gallery, and 
I need to attach my flow to my power app. So if I go into the power app automate button here on the left hand side, go to add flow and go and search for this new solution, scrape data from web. So that's just attaching that flow into my power app. And then once that's done, if I go to my button, I should be able to find that new expression for that flow. So pressing that button now will run that flow, but I want that to, the results to be in a collection so I can clear collect. I can type in my collection name, which can be my scraped data or scrapped data, I've called it. Scraped data. I need to put the closing bracket at the end there. So that keeps that expression happy. And then I need to update my gallery so that it's now using that collection, which is created as a result of running my flow. So if I put it into play mode and hit the button, hopefully it will bring through the data, which is fantastic. And then if I want to display other fields, I can control C and control V in order to create just a, a duplicate text field, which we can see here on the left hand side. And then I could change the expression here to return the other value. And there we go. So we have scraped the data from the website, returned it into a JSON array. Then we've passed that onto our Power App into a gallery and that we can now see that data. So this will be real time if this website gets an update and these prices change. If we were then to trigger that flow, it would of course trigger this HTTP action, pull the data as it is, find the opening and closing tag, get the table, convert it to XML into JSON, and then we can start building out our new select uh, action to create our nicely repurposed array of data. So that marks the end of the demonstration. Uh, plenty to take in there again, and uh, some good use of some of the data operations, select and uh, item and substring and index of, or nth index of, if you're looking to find a particular string or occurrence of a string. If you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe, and uh, hope to see you again sometime soon. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.